All right. Uh, hi. Uh, yeah, my name is Patrick Devine, and uh, I actually am a functional architect at Docker. Uh, and we're going to talk about 2D sprites with, with Unicode and Golang. But I realized uh, after I kind of put these, this presentation together, um, it probably would have been better called AKA Stupid Terminal Tricks. <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk a lot about um, things that you can do on the terminal if you have a text-based roguelike. Um, hopefully they're interesting. So, um, I think probably everyone here knows what a sprite is, but just the 15 second primer on that, um, if it moves on the screen and it's in 2D, then it's probably a sprite. So, uh, if Mario, Pac-Man, Hubert, um, the little sausage guy and Burger Time, they're all sprites. If it's moving around, it's a sprite. Um, does anyone know what this game is? This is the very first roguelike that I ever played. Uh, in from, I think it came out in 1984. Uh, it was called DND. D. Um, actually, it was capital D, capital N, capital D, not to be confused with the lowercase d, lowercase n, and lowercase d. Um, this was, this was, came out in, I think, 1984, uh, and it was for MS-DOS, and uh, I played the hell out of this game because I didn't have any other games on the PC. Um, yeah, it, I mean, you can see it's, it's I mean, the, the people that, that wrote it, they were, the, the guy that wrote it, he was trying to, um, you know, it's like a character sheet, and it kind of looks like Dungeons and Dragons, and he was trying to also um, show like a little dungeon crawler map type thing up in the corner, and you know, this did not use sprites, um, but he was still trying to convey a story, or trying to con convey um, what it would be like to play, you know, you could kind of like move around the dungeon and do stuff. Um, so my job, actually, as a functional architect, uh, I, what I do is I look at things like APIs, CLIs, and it's Docker, it's in containers, so I have to deal with, or my, my big constraint is it has to work in the container, it has to work in terminal. Um, and so, well, how do you convey a story, or how do you tell a story in a terminal, um, which, of course, the first thing you do as an engineer is you write your own sprite library. So. <laughs> Um, I'm going to give you a quick little uh, demo of the uh, of the let's see of the. By the way, you guys can do all this if you have Docker on your machines. This should all work, um, and it'll pull it down. Um, yeah, so this was like the first kind of like test sprite stuff that I wrote. It's all in the terminal. That's Moby there, the whale bouncing around. And we can add a few more Mobies. See if it lags out a little bit. It's actually the only thing that that kind of like stops the, or makes it a little bit laggy, um, is kind of like the size of the terminal itself. So, um, and if you're using certain terminals, um, they work better than other ones. So, um, yeah. So that that's kind of like the first first thing that I wrote was to to get that that working. And what's going on behind the scenes, um, the way that any kind of animation works, uh, really is just three steps: you're clearing the screen. You're updating the sprites, you're moving all those mobies around, um, and then you're just drawing them, and you just keep doing it forever. Um, well, so the first thing that you do after you've written your own sprite library is you gotta write a game. And uh, I started thinking of uh, what was like the most famous text game that was ever written. Um, and I don't actually, actually don't, don't know if most people realize that, that Tetris was written in, as, a, as a terminal game. Um, so this was written in 19, I think it was 84, uh, by Alexei Pajitnov. Um, this was written for um, like a Soviet knockoff of the PDP-11 mainframe. So it was uh, the Electronica 60, I think is what it was called. Um, and it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so uh, I, went, I went ahead and decided to write uh, a game. You guys, again, you can try this. Um, let's see. So this is my homage to, uh, to, to Tetris on the Electronica 60. And um, so here it is. I think I wrote this on the Caltrain um, <laughs> while I was commuting to and from work. Um, it's really hard to play when you're trying to give a talk as well. But um, yeah, it's pretty good. Actually, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I wrote this thing and um, I, I was kind of like, what, I don't know if people have seen the classic Tetris World Championships. They're coming up right now up in Oregon. Um, I was really obsessed with this. Like, this is the best eSport that's probably ever been invented. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen it, you should totally check it out. 
Um, so it, uh, I was really obsessed with that, and what I did was I actually timed all of the frames to be exactly the same as the frames in, in NES Tetris, but running on the terminal, of course. So, um, and actually, if you get to the higher levels, there's like the ASCII St. Peter's Basilica and the whole bit, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so check it out if you get a chance. Um, let's see. So uh, to get that, to get those frames to be the same as they were inside of Tetris itself, uh, there's only a few more tricks that you need to do. It's just the same thing. You're going to be clearing the screen, updating the sprites, drawing them, but you also are going to introduce a timer. There's other ways of doing this, of course, if you're if you're working with sprites. But when you're dealing with the terminal, since it's kind of blocky as things are moving, I find that this is the best way. So I just set it up for 60 frames a second, and and it works pretty well. So so what about ANSI? Well, we just I was showing you uh, ASCII graphics and. I mean, we saw PlaySki. I was like totally blown away by PlaySki. It was so so awesome. Um, I'm I'm a child of the '80s. So, uh, I grew up in the '80s, and uh, I first was from BBSs and dealing with with ANSI graphics, and I still love them a lot to this day. And and I started thinking about how I could go and do things with Unicode with this this particular sprite library. And then I, what I realized was there actually are even more Unicode uh, code points that you can use to go and do cool stuff with. And what I realized was that there were these quadrants. And if you think of this thing on, on the left as being a character, you can actually light up different quadrants of that character itself. And there's 16 values, and you can actually light them up in different parts. So if one part of it is, you can imagine these as now pixels. So we have four pixels that can, can go inside of every, every character, and you can light them up as the foreground or background characters. So that's pretty neat. Um, this little guy on the right, he is actually six characters wide, or six by six, I think. Uh, I'm a terrible artist, and I didn't go and write, like Plesky, I didn't go and write a, a way of going and, and, and drawing the stuff. So uh, I just do everything in ASCII, and I create all this stuff as text, and then I do interpolation, where it's really hard to go and draw each one of those individual characters. But uh, it still works pretty well if you write an, an interpolator. Here's the thing. Uh, I actually I use Linux on my home laptop. I don't I, I use I don't use Linux at work except for in in a terminal. Um, most of this stuff kind of works. It, it all works on Linux. Uh, this is where the Linux users are kind of like up in their ivory towers, like looking down on everyone else. Um, it doesn't work as well in in uh, Mac OS or in, in Windows, but uh, it still can work. And the kind of the key here. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Uh, so the key here is that you need a good font, um, a good monospace font. You got to change the line spacing in order to get. Usually, what uh, Mac OS and what Windows do is they kind of make the line spacing not, not work quite right. Um, iTerm2 is really cool. Uh, the first stuff I showed you with was just normal Mac terminal, but iTerm2 is actually GPU accelerated terminal. So we have GPU accelerated text, which is kind of fun. <laughs> Uh, Windows, yeah, you kind of just do the same. I don't know Windows as well, so uh, I, I'm kind of like the wrong person to ask here. I think they're doing a lot better stuff now. Uh, but, um, oh yeah, there's this thing called Unicode code points, and the thing about them is you have to kind of use UTF-16 instead of UTF-8, and it gets kind of weird. So uh, you're a little bit on your own. You can ask me if you have like problems getting this working. I can try to help, but we'll see. So here is my, my next demo uh, using, let's go to iTerm. Um, and make sure I get the right one. Oh, I already even have it up here. So this is this is text invaders. This is all in the terminal, just using straight straight Unicode characters, and it's playable playable space invaders. Um, the kind of the neat thing about this, you can actually like cut and paste. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, welcome to 1979. <laughs> So, um, yeah, well, okay, so, yeah, 1979, we had, we had it all in, in, in um, black and white. But we can do this in color, because we have color terminals as well, too, now. So what's kind of neat is you can do four different foreground and background colors, uh, and you can change these. And uh, also, if you're using, um, uh, most terminals use the X11 color palette, so you get 256 colors. That's actually a lot more than 8-bit uh, machines back in, in the mid-80s. 
So you can actually do a lot more colors than like a um, NES or, or like a Sega Master System. Problem with this though is that you can only do, in one of those four pixel characters, you can only do uh, two character or two colors that are inside of that, so you kind of get like weird artifacting and stuff like that. Um, the other weird thing, I didn't put this in the slide, but the other weird thing is, uh, and you probably couldn't notice it that much in the last one, you kind of get these like elongated pixels as well too, because it's it's higher than than it is wide. All right, so uh, this is. Um, my last thing. The other stuff that I showed you, you can pull it all from Docker Hub. It should just all work out of the box. This one I haven't put in into Docker Hub because I'm, um, there's a similar uh, project that people were working on with the C64, and the lawyers like, yeah, they're they're like circling around the building like sharks. I'm sure right now. So um, I didn't put it up, but if people are interested, uh, I can I can try to get you something. So this is this is uh, this is level one one. <laughs> In a terminal, so um, you can see a little bit of the jaggies there, where he's, or maybe you can't. Depends on how how close you are. Um, and I haven't finished this game because I really I didn't want to get sued, and so he he just kind of walks through the whole level, but um, <laughs> kind of goes over pits. <laughs> just gonna walk through some more pipes, but uh, but it works, right? Like I, I the way that I wrote this was uh, again everything. I'm using 16 by 16. Yeah, I know. Super Mario, <laughs> he can go through anything. Uh, so he, um, yeah, it, it, it's uh, the, it's a 16 by 16 pixels uh, inside of it, and each of it is again, it's all interpolated. Um, and I have the entire map of one one is is just like in a text file, um, and it kind of works. So, yeah, yeah, well, thank you. So if you want, if you want to get, uh, if you want to like test out the 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 stuff, it's all I, I mentioned that it was in GoLang before. This is a, a like a GoLang ASCII sprite library. You can get it all up on on GitHub, and most of the stuff, like the examples, were all in there as well too. If you want to check it out. Cool. We have time for maybe one question while we switch over laptops. Does anyone have a question? So, so I notice you're clearing the screen each time instead of using the terminal capabilities to go and, and you know minimize the amount of information sent over a telnet session. Have, have you thought about expanding the library to do uh, screen refreshes rather than complete redraws? Yeah, so I, I, I should actually, um, so I, I rely on Tmux to go and do that for me. So I'm not actually not doing a full okay. draw. So it, it is actually updating only the parts. And, and it, it works pretty well. Cool, thank you so much. Right, thanks everyone.